Hello, I've just come back from a few days in France and one of the things I did while I was there was have a lovely long browse in a beautiful bookshop and I couldn't resist buying a few books while I was there. So I'm going to share those with you. I've got five beautiful books here. They're all really, really different, interesting, very quirky and very inspiring. So I'm going to show you inside. Another thing I did while I was there was have a look at a library in a small village. I'm very glad that my lovely illustrator friend Bridget Marzo introduced me to this library and we had a good old look at all the books there. And Bridget told me that in France the government helps support children's books by having a little committee in every small town and village to choose new books to buy for the library every year. And I think that's one of the reasons why picture books in France are so individual and different and not necessarily at all what we would think of as commercial here in the UK. Um, so it was a real pleasure to look at those. So I'm going to start by showing you the ones I have here and then I'll show you photographs of the ones from the library. So the first one that I'm going to show you is called Champignon. It's all about mushrooms and the little creatures that use them as a sort of playground. So here's Champignon. And these little creatures are going zbing zbong on the mushrooms. They're bouncing on the mushrooms. They're living peacefully in the shade of the mushrooms. And they're great for climbing. I think that's right, my French isn't all that good. Some of the mushrooms issue a black cloud when they explode. And some of them are for dancing on. And some for playing hide and seek. I love the way these reflect the shape of lots of real mushrooms. And these ones are for bathing in. And all the time this little creature here is trying to tell the others he's got something to show them. And nobody's listening. And in the end he gets rather despondent and he says, I'm not going to tell you that I found a new mushroom. And they'll say, where? What? And they're all rushing to find the new one. And then he says, oh, sorry, I was wrong. It's, an, it's not a mushroom. It's this little character called Petit, petit milou. I didn't look properly. But then it turns out that there is a very, very tiny mushroom. And they agree not to tell anyone else. I love the use of white space here. The next one's called L'Enfant Jaguar. Jaguar child and it's about a boy in the Amazon going off on a journey of initiation to become a shaman. She's painted in the most beautiful, I don't know whether it's watercolour or gouache but it's really lovely loose strokes all the way through. The text is much longer than most UK picture books. And there are many, many more pages. But the atmosphere created in this artwork is absolutely superb. Some pastel or coloured pencil marks on top in this sort of, I suppose it's a mangrove swamp of some sort.
lots and lots of text on this page, but beautifully framed by all the watercolour foliage. This is where all the forest spirits come to meet him. Jaguar child. Each warrior has a wild beast who is their guide in the forest. My father has a tapir and I now have my jaguar who comes to play with me. called Magma and it's a very very funny really different look at um, a volcanic eruption from the point of view of the magma that's been waiting for millennia to burst out. I'd love to know more about how this book was made. It feels like some kind of um, printmaking technique, these dark areas. So it's very, very few words in this book, but there's a lovely sound effect here. Tabada, 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 tabada. And eventually an eye opens. Then the other, tabada, tabada, tabada. And the magma has woken up. And then you find out that the tabada is these little woolly mammoths. And there are lots of marvelous made up words like mag, mag magnifique. Look at the magma hopping across all the mountains, having a big old sunbathe. Running fast down the side of the mountain. So many places to explore, so many friends to visit. And meanwhile, above ground, human beings are coming into the picture, digging and building, making the magma rather angry until there's an eruption. Such exciting artwork there. It really does feel molten hot. The next one's called Les Canards Sauvage, the Wild Ducks. And it's a very, very funny one about a lot of ducks having a party. So here are those wild ducks and the end papers give you a sense of where they live. They're actually in this tree stump here and one of them has been to the boulangerie to buy some bread. That's how the story starts. Oh, so a baguette and some croissants. And then you start getting these wonderful cross sections where you can see inside the duck's home as they start getting ready for their party. Picking some flowers. They're choosing the music. And they're 
distributing the invitations to everyone they meet. And then they're going shopping. Keeping the drinks cool. And they're ready. And here's the party. Look at these snails hanging upside down and the fireworks going off. The wild ducks like to amuse themselves, but what they like above all is to sleep in their little beds. And there's the same scene again at night. You can just see their fairy lights on their little house. And the last of the ones that I brought back from France is Hokusai e la Fujisan, and it's about the Japanese artist Hokusai, told from the point of view of Mount Fuji. Just look at those beautiful end papers. It's got the feel of lithography, but I don't know what medium has been used. It could even possibly be digital. But whatever, whatever the way it's made, it's absolutely beautiful, this book. Just look at that. So Mount Fuji is introducing itself and talking about how tall it is. 3,776 metres. Surrounded by clouds. And temples. This little painter pleases me. He lacks nothing in courage or imagination. I love this page with all the brushes. This one's a story about an old lady who lives with an elephant. It's got beautiful end papers with all her vases of flowers. Each day they go for a walk, the two of them. And the children love playing this gigantic elephant. But not everybody in the town likes the elephant and he ends up being sent away. But at the end of the story, there's this beautiful image of the elephant embracing the entire town. This one's a simple and graphic story from Iceland about a boy who won't eat his soup, so his mother says she's going to give it to the moon instead. It's just a series of really striking shapes in three different colours and it's screen printed with lots of overlaps. 
and sometimes these give you one extra colour. It's like a piece of modern art. This book, The Most Beautiful Summer in the World, is completely painted in watercolour with no outlines. The only exception is the occasional page when it's just line only and that makes a very interesting contrast. Especially when it's on a double page spread with watercolour facing the line only drawings. It's also very bold with images such as this one where the boy's t-shirt isn't outlined at all and uh, it disappears altogether and yet your eye knows it's there. This one really plays with the idea that the girl is so big that she's bursting out of her own book. Every time you see her, there's a little bit of her that hasn't quite fitted in the frame. The book is drawn in pencil and it's just one colour with little hints of red here and there. There she is dreaming with her head in the clouds. And here she is with her classmates, much, much bigger than everyone else. This is a lovely composition where she's, we're looking over her shoulder and she's looking down on the city. Nice use of just a tiny bit of red there where her knee is bandaged. And then the class photo is a beautiful one that shows all the different personalities in the class. And she's so big that she doesn't quite fit in the double page spread, her head's cut off at the top. She's getting gradually bigger and bigger and bigger. But eventually, by the end, she goes to see her grandmother, who calls her a little girl and she's a normal girl again. And this last one is about a family of little bears and what I really like about this is the printmaking technique that's been used. All the different layers of printed patterns using, I'm guessing, ink, ink pad and foam that's been cut to fit. It's a lovely colour palette as well. Really, really nice to look at. I hope you enjoyed that dive into the beautiful world of French picture books and found something to inspire you. If you enjoyed this episode of looking at picture books, do subscribe to my channel. There's a button below to do that and it's free. See you next time.